What's going on everybody? It's your boy Kryptonian saying here bringing you guys another Black Clover chapter review for Black Clover chapter 341. And now that chapter 341 is done in the books, we got some major series shifting bombshells to discuss that should change how you look at Yami as a character, at least until we hear more from his side for full context. Because wow, Yami ending up in the Clover Kingdom has a new plot twist. Apparently in the land of sun, Yami is known as the next Itachi Uchiha who killed his entire clan which is why Ichika hates Yami so much which by extension explains why she dislikes Asta as much as she does because Asta is so fond of Yami it seems as if her being super pissed off was more than just the typical shonen gag that we've seen a lot of shonen Tabata was cooking up something else with her behavior and it was more than warranted when we look at Ichika's response here now that we got my initial thoughts out of the way let's back things up a little bit and let's get into the chapter recap before we get into the full on review so the chapter itself opens up with us meeting brand new characters who are reusing members and asta has now upgraded from being ichika's punching bag to training with three of the Ryus and members training him which is really huge because our boy Asta is getting put through the gauntlet with the combat training that he's receiving and Lucius is not gonna know what hit him when Asta pulls back up in the Clover Kingdom looking for round two because Asta is growing these three who Asta has combat training with they aren't slouches by any means Ichika was just the appetizer Asta was already having a hard time with Ichika but he's got his hands full with these three and it's through their combat training that we learn more about the method of fighting that Asta is getting a crash course in mastering. Each of these three who Asta is training with make it a point to speed blitz this man at various points during the training doing so at what appears to be a casual speed which further shows Asta how big that gap is and it gives him more incentive to learn everything he can while he's training with them. The panel and during this is pretty fast paced and we have a really well done fan service shot of the new female character which may or may not inspire some of you guys to add another female into Asa's harem by the time this is all said and done. After the training session is over and Asa's group is joined by Ryuya, we see how devoted to Ryuya the Ryuzen are and now that Asa has fully recovered, they've offered to train him up again which is another sign that the time Asa spends here he's going to be cramped with training which is a further sign that all that intense training that he did on his own all these years up to this was meant to prepare him for his body to be able to handle the intense strain that he's going to get with this training. They spent the whole day training until nightfall leaving Asa exhausted lying on his back declaring that he stood absolutely no chance against the reason that he trained with making it clear that for as strong as Asta is and for as hard as Ichika was on him she ain't the only one in this country with the ability to give Asta run for his money. Asta goes on to state that none of them were using magic when they fought him but their application of Zetan is really amazing but what's as equally amazing is that after their battle Asta is shown reflecting on what happened and mulling over the information that he gained from fighting them which is another sign of how overpowered our boy has become over time while using Zetan the Ryuzen have the ability to use in multiple ways. Zetan is a power of 10 being applied to attacks and from how it appears to be broken down the force is divided by the number of strikes you use it for. So for instance with the power of 10 if you split that power up into two strikes it's essentially the same force of two fives. If you use five punches you can dish out blows up to two times with each of those five strikes. When you look at what Zetan was able to do for these Ryuzen members it makes you look at Asa someone who's already incredibly powerful and it makes you realize how insanely strong his blows are about to become once he learns to apply this method of fighting lucius and julius they might share the same body but after this asa's about to smack the bipolar out of the wizard king and end all that good versus evil soul situation going on with the next hit that asa lands on the boy being the ever self-reflecting trainee that he is always seeking to improve himself asa then goes on to further state that during the battle he realized that he needs to do a better job at exploiting the openings of his enemies when he's fighting against them 
but he states that it's a very difficult thing for him to do because he also needs to be able to perform a perfect zet and when he finds the weaknesses to exploit. This is going to bode well for Asta once he masters his method of training because showing up his weaknesses while also using those weaknesses to enhance his strengths is going to make him a lot harder to deal with, especially as he starts using brute force against Lucius during their battle or starts creating openings in order to use his anti-magic and the other fighting methods that he's able to learn here in the Lane of Sun. It's then that Ichika begins to visit Asta under the orders of Ryuzen and we start to get a bit of a lore dump but it's not bogged down to the point where it's an info dump and it slows down the story because between Asta's wide eyes and expressions during certain points and his goofy expressions and how Asta and Ichika are overly animated at times it keeps the flow of the conversation moving as quickly as one would expect from a black clover chapter a lesser mangaka would have just paneled everything with text boxes and not taken advantage of the unique advantages that manga as a medium offers for a storytelling function which we see here on perfect display in how the anticipation is built through the expressions and how the overly animated shots have the thick speed lines for the large panel where Ichika is shouting how popular Ryuya is and then when she and Asta are drawn on the opposite panel you have that far away angle for the panel and the speed lines have decreased noticeably only to increase once you get the close-up of her eyes at the bottom of the panel at the bottom of the page where she passionately calls Ryuya a wonderful person and she has smoke coming out of her nose those three panels right there they do an effective job of causing the reader to slow down while while reading and then speed up where appropriate without there being a single punch thrown here you have a rise and fall in action is all depicted through the way the speed lines are utilized as well as the way that the panels are utilized and most importantly the expressions expressions are such a huge thing in manga it can make or break a scene and this is brilliant work right here now getting back into the story itself this is where we start getting into more of the nitty-gritty here so we also learn that Ichika is 24 years old and as she begins to start speaking to Asta on top of her not causing Asta more brain damage by hitting him she begins to reveal more about the land of sun and the inner workings of it this from a writing perspective is a good move to use her as a vehicle to explain how the country works and more about Ryuya because it shows her character in a different light while also filling us in as readers with more knowledge about the expanded world building we learn that Ryuya's eye is called clairvoyance which if you're caught up with Boruto's manga this should ring a bell for you because Ada's Simrigon powers are all also referred to as clairvoyance as well. Due to Ryuya having clairvoyance and exceptional wisdom and popularity, he was able to unite the land of sun. It's at this point she begins to start fangirling over Ryuya and we see a bit of a shift and we learn information that paints Ryuya in a different light right now. And by extension, it also paints Yami in a different light. And the great thing about all this is how Ichika is beginning to start telling Asa all the stuff about Yami and it comes in the midst of a dark setting due to it being nighttime which is a subconscious choice in order to prepare the readers for the dark information they're about to get which again goes back to taking advantage of the unique advantages that manga as a medium offers where it can convey things that can't be effectively done with just a good anime adaptation. When Ichika is going on and revealing how great Ryuya is and how in dead it she is to him asta makes the mistake of mentioning yami and trying to big him up and it's at that point that the demon in ichika shows up because she pretty much stops him in his traps before he can go any further about yami she shuts it all down and essentially she says that she hates yami because yami killed their entire clan the chapter ends off starting off with ichika's flashback where it seems as if we're going to learn more about yami's past and why Ichika hates him so much. How this part is handled is definitely going to make or break this plot twist. It's a welcome plot twist though, but I am all for learning more about how Yami came up and this has the potential to be a great zinger for the story if it's handled right. It can elevate Yami's character even higher if it's done properly. So my chapter question to you guys is why do you think Yami pulled in Itachi and killed his entire clan? Is there more to the story that Yami's sister doesn't know? Why you think that overclick here to watch these other Black Clover and other anime videos you see on the screen right now.